Are you thinking about moving to rural Tennessee? Did you watch our best rural towns in the volunteer state video? If you did, today we're looking at the other side of the Tennessee coin, the worst rural towns. Like I said in previous videos, whenever I post a best rural towns video, I get a flood of emails that all start with, what about this town? And then the person goes on to list some other random rural town that in most cases looks like a miserable place to live. I thought I should start listing rural towns that you should probably avoid. Are these towns the absolute worst places to live on the earth? No, they just have some bad stats, a bad location, things like that. Okay, before we get started, one thing I have to say. When you go to any small town in the United States, 90% of the people in that town are going to be some of the greatest people you ever meet. The really nice, friendly folks. They just always have that 10% that are really screwing up the stats and making a nice place to live a bad place to live. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Ridgely, Tennessee. Ridgely, Tennessee sits almost two hours north of Memphis and about a mile and a half east of the shores of the Mississippi River. That's from downtown Ridgely, like their main street. Which this also means it's not too far from Missouri or Missouri, depending on what part of Missouri you come from. Ridgely doesn't look like a terrible place. It does look like it's seen better days. Their downtown, which is Main Street, looks like it could use some serious renovations. And judging from this street view picture from 2019, they might be doing some. Probably not enough. Ridgely has a population of 1,980 people. That was in 2020. I think they've lost a couple since then, but they got a crime rate that's 59% above the national average. Now, this is strange. Their crime rate isn't astronomical like other cities we've seen. This is a small rural town, so 59% is kind of high, especially they got almost 2,000 people, so that's legit. But normally when you see a violent crime rate that is as high as theirs, 221% above the national average, it normally stems from domestic violence issues. This is a southern state and the southern states kind of have a problem with it. Nine of the 15 with the highest domestic violence rate are southern states, with Tennessee being number 14. Now, I'm not sure if that's Ridgely's problem. I tried to look it up. I couldn't find anything on it. I just, that's usually an indicator. I don't know. The poverty level in Ridgely is 109% above the national average. Number nine, Bethel Springs, Tennessee. Bethel Springs sits about 35 minutes south of Jackson, Tennessee, which there's a great <laughs> Kroger fight on there. Some women got in a fight in a Kroger in Jackson, Tennessee, and it is hysterical. And one of the ladies was doing my favorite thing that kind of indicates that they don't know how to fight. They put their hand across their chest like, I don't know, a butler does when he has a white hand towel across his arm. And then they hold their other hand down around their hip and they act like <laughs> that is leaving your face exposed. I've boxed in the army and in college. I've been in a few fisticuffs in my life. When I see someone do that, I know they're getting ready to get the front teeth loosened up. But if you want to see a good fight in a grocery store, watch that one. Anyway, Bethel Springs is far enough away from Jackson where they don't have a Kroger they have to worry about fighting in. Bethel Springs is a farming town of about 950 people and they got a crime rate that's 104% above the national average. Bethel Springs has a poverty rate that sits about 109% above the national average. The good news is if you want to buy a house here, they've got something for every budget. They have lots for as low as $12,000. They have homes you probably don't want for about $60,000. Ones that look like they're decent for about $150,000. And they go all the way up into the four hundred dollars and $500,000 for really nice homes that probably come with like two acres. Just stay out of the Kroger in Jackson. Number eight, Sandburg, Tennessee. Sandburg, Tennessee is located on the eastern shore of Real Foot Lake. So prior to December 10th, 2021, they didn't have the best stat. And I kind of feel bad about putting them on the list because this town was destroyed by a tornado. They are rebuilding. But the reason I'm gonna leave them on the list is because I want to put some links for their GoFundMe on this video. So they'll be down below. There's a few. You could just type in Sandburg, Tennessee, GoFundMe. A lot of the families there have GoFundMes up and they could use some help. But Sandburg did have a population of 200 and their crime rate was 43% higher than the national average. The poverty level in Sandburg is about 52% above the national average, which isn't good. I'm just guessing that means some of these people may not have homeowners insurance or whatever. Or if they do, it's probably not the best. But if you do want to buy a home here, they do have some pretty cheap lots going. <laughs> they used to have homes on them, sadly, and now they don't. But there's one lot currently going for 19000 It's good size. Then they have a home that was untouched. It's going for $65,000. And then they have 65 acres near town that is going for about $240,000. 
So if you want to get in on a rebuilding of a small lake town, Sandburg may be it for you. It just didn't have the best stats before the tornado. Number seven, Atwood, Tennessee. While I was trying to record this, I almost said Roman Atwood like six different times. He's an old school YouTuber that's huge. He's not into it as much as he used to be, but I used to watch him all the time. But Atwood, Tennessee has a population of 921 residents. Roman Atwood is not one of them. Atwood sits about two hours west of Nashville, Tennessee, and they got a crime rate that sits about 90% above the national average. That's not good, especially for such a small town. This is a cute little rural farming town that doesn't look bad. They just don't have the greatest stats. Like their poverty rate. Their poverty rate's 60% higher than the national average. If you want to buy a home in Atwood, you're probably looking around 200,000 as your starting money. That'll get you something decent. And they have a lot of newer construction that start off around 300,000. If you want a lot and build something on it, they've got quite a few of them starting at around an acre, going up to about three acres for $30,000, just depending on which one you choose, I guess. Number six, Trenton, Tennessee. Trenton, Tennessee probably shouldn't be on this list because it's a little big, but it's definitely a rural town. Trenton has a population of just about 4,000 residents. They've got a McDonald's, a Subway, a Dollar General, and a Family Dollar. Nothing says Southern town like two sworn enemies battling it out across Main Street for the American dollar. Family Dollar is in the Davy Crockett Mall, which is a little roadside mall. The significance here is Davy Crockett. He is a big hero in Tennessee. He was born in Tennessee and died at the Alamo, and everyone knows that story. A lot of people confuse him with Daniel Boone that aren't from the South or Tennessee, especially. That's Davy Crockett, not to be confused with Daniel Boone. A lot of people do that. If you're not from Tennessee or that part of the country, you think Daniel Boone is Davy Crockett or vice versa. Daniel Boone started in Pennsylvania and was about 50 years before Davy Crockett. They kind of did the same thing. They were frontiersmen, explorers. Davy Crockett went on to be like a congressman and stuff like that and went down to the Alamo and got killed there. But so you'll run into a lot of things in Tennessee that are named Davy Crockett. Trenton has a crime rate that's 93% above the national average. And their poverty level is 143% higher than the national average. If you want to buy a home here, they got something for every budget. They have small homes that, yeah, they look livable. You might need to do a little bit of work, but they start off around 30000 If you want something decent, eh, you're probably going to be spending around 175000 all the way up to 400000 And for 400000 you get something that's like really nice. Number five, Baileyton, Tennessee. Baileyton sits about an hour northeast of Knoxville. It was originally called Laurel Gap. This area was first settled in 1776 and named after two brothers who lived in the area, Claudius and Thomas P. Baileyton. The town was incorporated in 1915, so it's been around a while and it's really not gained in population. They only have 427 residents and they do have a Baileyton celebration every year. They got it coming up this September, I believe. Now, when it comes to the crime rate, this one isn't terrible. Their crime rate is actually 6% above the national average, but their violent crime rate is 127% above the national average. The poverty level in Baileyton is 43% higher than the national average. If you want to buy a house here, uh, it's kind of weird. There's nothing in town, but in the surrounding area, nice homes that are rural with a couple acres start off around $130,000, but they can get all the way up to like a million dollars for like 300 acres. If you like to fish and let's say hike in the woods, this is a great place for it. You can't go what seems like a mile without running into a creek in any direction or several. Number four, Pleasant Hill, Tennessee. Pleasant Hill is about an hour west of Knoxville with a little over 500 residents that are only one generation or so past moonshining being a legitimate profession. Don't confuse this one with Pleasant Hill, California. <laughs> Just kidding. It's impossible to confuse these two. In Pleasant Hill, Tennessee, most homes go for under 200000 In Pleasant Hills, California, a one-bedroom condo will run you 750000 up there in the Bay Area. It's incredibly expensive. While I was researching this, almost every state has a Pleasant Hills. Pleasant Hill has a crime rate that's 69% above the national average, and their poverty level sits about 98% above. 
This town was first settled in 1819. Then in 1894, a teacher from the American Missionary Association established the Pleasant Hills Academy. Today, the main building of that academy is known as Pioneer Hall, and it's still standing. And stay to the end, and you'll get to hear about a town that was named after a, a fake Indian chief. He wasn't fake. He was from a novel. Number three, Toontown, Tennessee. Actually, it's just Toon, Tennessee, but it is a town. Toon sits a little over an hour east of Memphis, Tennessee. That hour marks just far enough away not to get any of that Memphis stink on you. And they have a population of about 366 residents. Now, here's something nice about the place. Their total crime rate is 10% lower than the national average. Bravo! But like all tunes, they're violent. You ever seen a Bugs Bunny cartoon? How about Tom and Jerry? They are very violent tunes. This town's violent crime rate is 369% above the national average. Outstanding, Toon Town. Now, the cool thing is their property crime is actually 85% lower than the national average, and that helps them with their crime rate. Their poverty rate is 86% higher than the national average. When it comes to real estate, a decent place is going to start off around $160,000, $175,000 and work their way up to about $300,000. And those lots usually come with an acre or two at least. Now, they don't have a lot for sale right now, but in recent months they've sold some and that's about what it sits at. They did sell a bunch of lots though in recent months, so I get the feeling someone's getting ready to build something there. This again is another great place if you like the outdoors and you like to fish. Tons of creeks around here and the Hatchie River isn't too far away either. That's great for fishing, catfish and gar normally, and a lot of people like to canoe this river. This town started off in 1856. Now, people lived in the area before that, but the town kind of took off in 1856, and it was developed around a railroad stop. This is kind of interesting. Toon is home to the Kilgore Flare Company. The company has operated near Toon since the early 1920s. They manufacture like those air-deployed decoy flares that are used by the U.S. military aircraft. They have a really big complex for such a small little town out in the middle of nowhere. Number two, Linden, Tennessee. Linden is about an hour and a half southwest of Nashville. This is the type of place your wife makes you move to when she finds out you're a regular at Hooters. You obviously can't be trusted and you gotta move someplace where she can keep her eye on you. Linden is a small town of 881 residents. Not at Hooters anywhere. But they do have plenty of crime. Their crime rate is 114% above the national average. Now, Linden covers a big area, big rural area, but the town itself sits on the Buffalo River, which is a pretty good river for fishing and kayaking, whatever you want to do. And then you want to go a little bigger. On the outskirts of town, you have the Tennessee River, about 15 minutes away from downtown. Linden has more than its fair share of poverty. The poverty level in Linden, 169% above the national average. That's not great. What really sucks about this place, you don't even get a break on the real estate. It's kind of expensive. A shack here will cost at least $150,000. But a majority of the homes that are worth living in and you could move right in and not have to worry about much, start off around $250,000 and work their way up. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below. All right, on to number one. And number one, Nyota, Tennessee. Nyota sits about the midway point between Knoxville and Chattanooga, right near Athens. This town was originally called Mouse Creek, but it was renamed in 1897 to avoid confusion with a railroad stop in Jefferson County that was called Mossy Creek. And they got the name Nyota from some dime novel that had an American Indian chief named Nyota. That's a little interesting. After that, there's not much to this place. Nyota has a population of about 1,000, and their crime rate is 33% above the national average. Their violent crime rate is 111% above. This one has one of the lowest poverty levels I've seen on this list, or actually in most of Tennessee, in the areas that would be considered bad rural towns. It's only 26% higher than the national average. Not bad. If you want to buy a home here, buckle up. It gets expensive. They have some really nice homes here that go for over 600 and 700,000. If you want anything livable that's ready to go and nice, it's gonna be at least 200,000 on up. Anything below that, you run the risk of getting a visit from that couple that's on the DIY show Fixer Upper. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, be nice to each other.